So you've been especially interested in sex determination in reptiles, and it's not whether they have an X or Y chromosome. It has to do with what temperature the eggs are incubated at. Is that right? That's correct. I didn't so a crocodile? <clears throat> so it's scattered throughout reptiles. I didn't discover this, but um, I certainly worked out the theory behind it, why you might expect it. But it, it came as a total surprise to people because we were so used to sex chromosomes being found in things. Right. And we always imagined that even if a species didn't have sex chromosomes, there would still be a genetic basis for whether you're male or female. But this was only discovered in the 60s, right? Yes, it was only discovered in the 60s. And the first studies just weren't very convincing. Well, I guess it was such a fundamentally new idea that it was hard to believe. Um, they weren't necessarily done in the wild. And so it was just an obvious problem. I, I started work on this in the 70s, and I started it totally from a skeptic's point of view. Really? So you thought it was? I thought it was complete nonsense. Uh -huh. And I set out to do field work on turtles. Um, I ran into a turtle biologist at the University of Wisconsin, and he knew where turtles nested in abundance. And so I went out there determined to show it didn't work in the wild. I bought black gravel for aquaria uh -huh. because I wanted to get the nest as warm as possible and still show that it didn't work. And um, and we happened to collect some, we went out, This, when I first met him, we went out to collect some hatchling turtles, so before we could do any experiments, but it was August, it was the day Elvis Presley died. Oh, wow. And we went out and collected a bunch of things and opened them up and looked at the gonads to see if we could tell males from females. And, and for the map turtles, which is a, a common type of turtle there, I couldn't tell any difference, they all looked the same. And so I thought, well, this isn't gonna work. And he had a couple of eggs incubating in the lab at cold temperature. And when they hatched a couple of months later and I looked at them, they I were. realized the two he'd incubated were both males, clearly males. I realized everything else I'd looked at was a female. And suddenly I thought, oh my this is real. And then for the next three years, we did very intensive so field So cold work. incubation gives you males. And in, the, in that species, is, yes. Is it, but it's, it's not consistent that way. It's not consistent across all reptiles and in snapping turtles, in fact, I think it's extreme cold and extreme warm give you males. I may have it backwards, but it's a bell-shaped curve really? so that you get one sex at the two extremes and the other sex in the middle. So what's going on here evolutionarily? It would be better for them to make relatively equal numbers of each sex and let it go at that, wouldn't it? Good question. Um, that has got to be the main drawback of it. So this goes back to Rick Charnoff, the ideas for this, um, we had published a paper in, I think, 77. We knew about environmental sex determination and other things, like marine worms, there were some nematodes and that, and we made a real good evolutionary argument for when sex, why evolution should favor that kind of a system. And it had to do with <clears throat> if, as an embryo, you're growing up in an environment that would make you relatively better off as a male in life than as a female, or vice versa. Because the males can have more offspring, or or, or, or because, let's say, you don't have a lot of nutrients, and you're going to be small in life, and in lots of species, um, males are smaller than females, right? Mm -hmm. Female fecundity goes up with body size. So if you're in that situation, then it makes sense for you to control, you know, to essentially make a decision, I should be male because um, my future fecundity is going to be better off than if I become female. Mm -hmm. We had that in place. The examples we knew of at the time made sense. We left out, I knew that the turtles had, uh, there was a report the turtles had temperature dependent sex determination. I said, let's leave it out of the paper. It's probably not going to be real. And it's too hard to figure out what sex it's, they are. And it's not, well, <laughs> <coughs> and the problem is it's, there's no clear advantage, right? Because yeah. in a reptile, you might live 20 years as an adult. You're coming out as a, you know, of an egg that big, you might grow to be that big. And it was just inconceivable. It was, there was any mechanism by which your incubation temperature could affect your long-term fitness. Right. So that was in place, and then I was just so intrigued by the possibility, I, we decided, Dick Vogt and I at Wisconsin decided to, to do all this field work on it, and lo and behold, it's not only there, it's not even subtle. I mean, you go literally, if you're incubating eggs at a constant temperature, you can, you're all males up to one point, and then about a degree higher, all females. It's so striking. wouldn't this result on a particular small lake 
almost all the turtles one year being male or almost all of them being female? Yes. Um, so and especially with climate, yeah, with climate change, well, not even climate change, it's just some years are colder than others. So, so this doesn't seem very sensible. Of the species that are known to have this system, they're all pretty long lived. So if you now imagine- yeah. If it was one year's- One year's sex what, ratio right? doesn't have much impact. Okay, so as long as it balances out. And as long as that temperature setting is adjusted to the normal variations in that area, this sounds like an area where global warming could really follow things up. It is, except that when the turtle, so the nest temperature depends both on the climate, but it depends on when the turtles lay the eggs. So if the climate mm -hmm. is warming up, they nest a bit earlier, which mm -hmm. will, which can tend to even keep, out, yes. It, whoa, that's fascinating. Let's go on in a minute to a related topic.